the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, pharmacies saw a spike in demand for emergency contraceptives like the Plan B pill. Doctors also saw an increase in patients requesting IUDs and procedures to prevent pregnancy, like tubal ligations, also known as getting your tubes tied. In addition, there is now more than one pharmaceutical company trying to get clearance for over-the-counter birth control pills, which would be the first ever available without a prescription. Meanwhile, earlier this week, the House voted to codify a decades-old Supreme Court ruling relating to contraception. All this comes after Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas suggested the court revisit the case that protects access to birth control. Joining us now to talk more about concerns over birth control access is the medical director of Planned Parenthood of Arizona, Dr. Jill Gibson. Uh, Dr. Gibson, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, right now, more than 160 million women worldwide can't get the contraception they need. That's according to a new study. And the women who can get it are still concerned about losing access. So do you think this is something women should be legitimately worried about right now? Yeah, I think it's a really good point. And what I would say is that all of the medical therapies and sort of all of the tools that we've relied on for the past you know, half century to take care of our lives and to protect our futures don't necessarily seem as guaranteed as they did, say, two or three weeks ago. And so I do feel that in this current political climate, patients really have a legitimate concern about what may or may not be accessible to them in the near future. Right. It, it did feel like something that was guaranteed, like you said, not you didn't have to think about it so much. So now that people are thinking about it, what would your advice be? Uh, should women be preparing for the worst case scenario in any way? Well, what I would say to that is that we always encourage our patients to think ahead and to plan ahead for their contraceptive needs. And we've really had some movement in the past, I would say decade, to encourage patients to switch to more long-acting reversible contraceptive methods, even before this was sort of all in play. And that's because these are the methods that are easiest to use, are most reliable, and generally really have the fewest side effects for patients. So that movement had already started, and I think now it just has a, a really renewed sense of urgency for our patients. I will say that I've had several staff members approach me over the past couple of weeks, really recognizing that the situation has changed and, and ask me to help them secure access to some of the long-acting reversible contraceptives. Mm -hmm. uh, and on, on that note, do you think there will be a form of contraception that would be the easiest to continue to obtain if people are looking to prevent pregnancy? Um, like you mentioned long-term things like an IUD, of course, if you get it now, it could last up to five years. Um, and then there's also the option of men getting vasectomies. What, what kind sure. of long-term uh, option should people look towards now? Or what options do you think will remain protected in the short term? Sure, so our long-acting reversible contraceptives are our IUDs, and those can last between three and 10 years, actually. We have implants that are good for about five years. And then for patients that know that they have completed childbearing and want permanent sterilization, vasectomy and female sterilization are really great options. But because those are not considered reversible and are definitely permanent, we really want to encourage patients to make sure that they know that that's the right route for them before they make those decisions. I will say that one interesting thing that I've seen reported from my patients recently is that they really are rethinking their whole reproductive future in, a, in this new context differently. So I've had patients that are really quite young that maybe had considered that they would potentially want more children in the future, now making decisions about permanent sterilization because of the fear of really the reproductive landscape in this country currently. Yeah, it's a really big decision that some people are being forced to consider that hadn't before. All right, uh, Dr. Gibson, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.